All right, friends, it is time to talk about everybody's favorite topic, one hit wonders. And you know, the 90s, we all want to pretend the 90s were just full of great music like Korn and Nirvana and Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg and all that stuff. But if you were around back then, you will remember the 90s were full of one hit wonders, some of which were great, some of which, you know, maybe not so great. So I figured we would take a little trip down memory lane and look at some of the best and, you know, some of the maybe not so best one hit wonders of the 90s. Let's check it out. The first one being Baby Got Back by Sir Mix-a-Lot. And also, I would like to thank Factor for sponsoring this video. They make nutritious, chef-prepared meals delivered right to your door, so you have the time and energy to tackle everything on your to-do list. And I don't know about you, but my to-do list is getting longer and longer every day. For me, the reason why I like Factor is because it's about saving time while still eating clean. It cuts down on trips to the grocery store and cooking, which means I have more time to focus on my channel and workouts and just all the other projects I have going on. And honestly, I just do not enjoy cooking, but I also care a lot about hitting my macros. So with Factor, I can do both. And if you eat out a lot, it's also a great way to save money. It's a lot cheaper than takeout or even worse, delivery, which is honestly a complete ripoff. So why not put all that time and money into doing something fun now that the weather is warming up? They also have a ton of different options like Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, Vegan and Veggie. There are 34 different chef prepared dietitian approved weekly choices so if you want to check out factor and honestly i think you should head to factor75.com or click the link below and use the code fin50 to get 50 percent off your first factor box my god becky look at her butt she looks like one of those rap guys girlfriends she looks like one of those rap oh, guys girlfriends her. when you say rap guy we all know what they mean right like how when they say like urban music, you know, we think you'd be a a, a great fit for our uh, our urban charts. Like, oh, uh, one of my cousins is actually half urban. You other brothers can't deny that when a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, you get sprung. I remember, you know, Sir Mix a Lot is from Seattle. There's only two rappers ever from Seattle, basically, which is Sir Mix a Lot and Macklemore. Do you say Macklemore or Macklemore? I still don't know. Either way, one of the only two rappers ever from Seattle. Very ahead of the curve on the big butt trend. I mean, back then, it was controversial to say that you liked big butts. Mixlot was really putting his neck out, sticking up for the big butts. He even had somebody make these giant foam butts. I mean, the man was committed. One hit wonder of the 90s for sure, but... You know, Sir Mix Lot's legit. He had a lot of other good songs before this and after it. Uh, seems like a great guy. I never met him, but he seems like a great guy. Also, fun fact, the version of Baby Got Back that you've heard in commercials and stuff like that, he re-recorded so that he would own the masters. From what I understand, all the versions that you've heard of this in commercials and stuff, he's making a ton of money off that because they are using his master because he re-recorded it. Very smart. He pulled the Tay-Tay before Tay-Tay. He did indeed. He did indeed. Yeah, he's done a lot of those different commercial jingles. He has. So he's probably made a whole lot of money off this song. A financially secure one-hit wonder. Exactly. Before you go using one-hit wonder as an insult, before you go looking down your nose, judging all those one-hit wonders, just ask yourself, did you ever make enough money to build giant styrofoam butts? I don't think so, buddy. I don't think so. So did this song hold up? I would say yes. Plus, remember, not only was this song a hit on its own, it was a hit for a second time when Nicki Minaj basically covered it with Anaconda in, what was that, 2014 or something like that. Huge song. Like, Anaconda, one of the biggest songs of the year. It was a sample, but as far as I'm concerned, it was basically a cover. And, uh, yeah, so it was a hit twice, basically. So there we go. Shout out to Mix. Seems like a good guy. I like him. Now, how about a uh, quintessential one-hit wonder of the 90s, Macarena by Los Del Rio. And uh, what I did not realize until I looked this up, apparently the version that got big is actually a remix by the Bayside Boys. I gotta learn the dance. I don't know how it goes. I'll just pretend that I know it. This is really the definitive one-hit wonder. It's true. I did not know that this was a remix. This is the original by Los Del Rio. 
This doesn't sound cringy. This this just actually sounds pretty good. The 90s had the Macarena. The 10s had the Gangnam style. What did the 2000s have? Yeah, Crank Dat. Yeah, Crank, crank Dat. Okay, yeah. Crank Dat would be the 2000s version of this. I was never under the impression that this was like a great song or anything like that. I haven't listened to it for a long time. The song is really really bad um it's very bad this part is okay but like this part is really really bad like it sounds like they just took random people off the street and like shoved a mic in their face and they're like here sing these lyrics and like oh but i don't know how to sing and they're like oh that's okay go for it it'll be fine uh, I'm already tired of it. The song has already been on for a minute and 32 seconds. It feels like it's been an eternity. Do people actually like this song or... I mean, that little hook there is very catchy. I admit it. But did anybody actually like this song? That's that's my question. Did people like this or is it just something that like they had fourth graders dance to? You know, like there's the, the, the requirements of like... X minutes per day of physical exercise in the classroom. And uh, now they probably have kids dance to like Baby Shark. Is this just like the Baby Shark of the 90s for like fourth graders to like wiggle around to? Or do people actually like it? That's my question. They actually brought us into our gymnasium for gym class to learn the song. See, that's what I'm talking about. They had us dancing to the song in gym class in sixth grade. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Baby Shark is a bop. Baby Shark is very annoying, but it's better than this. It's very bad. I wanted to think that this song held up. I did. Because, you know, generally speaking, I feel like things get popular for a reason. This has 188 million views in three years. You know, a song from whatever, 25 years ago. I wanted to say that this was good. Um, nothing about this is good. The video is awkward. The song is bad. The original is okay, but this remix is really bad with like the cringy, awkward, karaoke sounding vocals. I'm sorry, Los Del Rio. The song's not good. I'm sorry. I wanted to like it, but I just can't. I can't do it. I do wonder though. I'm kind of surprised that this hasn't come back on TikTok, right? Like you would think that the 90s revivalists would like semi-ironically bring back the Macarena. You would think, like, how is this not blown up on TikTok again? Imagine, like, e-girls doing this dance. It feels like it should have happened by now. I don't know. Okay, how about Stay by Lisa Loeb? Anybody remember this one? You say this is a great song. I, only hear what I, want to. I predict that this video won't do well on YouTube because in order to, like, remember most of these songs, you have to be, like, over the age of 35. <laughs> Listen to that snare, too. And I thought that I don't belong. Also, an interesting story about this song. So she was unsigned at the time that this came out. And uh, I guess she was like friends with Ethan Hawke or somehow or another. She like knew Ethan Hawke, who was uh, in that movie Reality Bites and lots of other stuff. And somehow or another, he ended up putting this song in the movie and she got signed based on that. And so this was like one of the first examples of an unsigned artist having a hit. She got signed off of it, of course, or after this, but one of the first examples of an unsigned artist having a hit this big. She definitely made this look popular too, because uh, I will tell you, every hardcore and punk guy, every single one of us had a crush on Lisa Loeb. If anyone says otherwise, they're lying. Every single one of us loved Lisa Loeb. It's a fact. So she made the sort of, this is like the sexy grunge librarian look, right? The like awkward librarian, but you know, you wonder, she seems so shy. It seems like she doesn't want to talk to me. But, but maybe she really likes me. Maybe if I just go talk to her, maybe she'll be like, oh, I love your band. Oh, you play guitar? That's so cool. I love you. I think this is a great song. Um, this whole album, by the way, I was like a legitimate fan of Lisa Loeb back then. I, I like legitimately, her music is great. And uh, the whole album is really good. If you're into this sort of thing, you know, singer, songwriter kind of stuff, the whole album is actually really good. I would suggest it. I would say it definitely holds up. I like it.
good stuff. Yeah, shout out to Lisa Love. Good song. Next up, uh, another hit. I think this is from 91, I think, maybe 92. Blind Melon, No Rain. This is from 93, okay. I remember hating this song at the time, but I've changed my mind. Skip, no way. This song is great. And so is the video. It's a very sweet, nice video. I'm not skipping anything. This poor girl in her bee suit, her bee costume, dancing her heart out, and everyone laughs at her. She runs away and cries. Very sad. But here come the boys in Blind Melon to cheer her up. Got kind of a hippie vibe. I hated this song at the time because all I wanted to hear was like Sepultura and the Circle Jerks and shit. And I was like, this sucks. Why aren't they playing thrash riffs? This is trash. But now I like it. I think it's great. It's a great song and a great video too. This is one of those examples of when the song and the video just go together perfectly. It's very sweet. You know, I was whatever, 13 or 14 when this came out. I thought it sucked. But looking at it now as an adult, I'm like, what a nice song. You know, this little girl that got crapped on just trying to go out there and dance in her bee costume. If that was my daughter, that would make me very sad because now I'm closer in age to her parents than to her. When I was a kid, I was like, that girl sucks. <laughs> I would laugh at her too, but now I think of her, I'm like, oh, what if that was my daughter? It's very sweet. It's nice. It's a nice message. And what a great video. I don't know who directed it, but like, this is, I would say one of the best videos of the nineties. Yeah. She goes and finds her bee people and now she can go be happy doing her bee dance out in the field with her bee people. It's a nice message. I like it. It's very sweet. The sad part is that the singer of Blind Melon, Shannon Moon is his name, right? Um, very sad. He died of a uh, heroin overdose a couple years after this came out, uh, which is sad. Um, he seemed like a nice guy. Shannon Hoon. Okay, that's right. Yeah. He died a couple years later. Very sad. Um, you, you see this. It's like, I joke about it, but it's like kind of true that it almost feels like being a one hit wonder is almost like a death sentence. So like two of the guys from LFO are dead. One of the guys from Criss Cross is dead. Like the guy from Fountains of Wayne is dead. It is sad. A lot of, lot of dead one hit wonders out there. Uh, anyway, does the song hold up? I would say absolutely it does. I think this is a great song. I think the video is even better. 10 out of 10 video. One of the best videos of all time, I would say. Very sweet. Nice video. I like that a lot. I respect that they were willing to make a nice, sweet video, you know? It's like we want everyone to be edgy and dark, but sometimes being sweet is nice too. Um, I like it. It does hold up, in my opinion. Next up, we have Bittersweet Symphony by The Verve. Speaking of songs that got overplayed, during uh, the prime of Britpop, like Oasis and shit, and blur every like indie and hardcore girl they all wanted a guy that looked like this some like shaggy artsy dude with pale skin and that bushy mop of british hair they all love these guys that's right he's so badass walking down the street in his leather jacket guy looks like he's 6 2 120 pounds wearing this leather jacket that's like draped over his shoulders Look at that. Absolute Chad. Look at this. He says, move, bitch. Get out the way. Top G. Andrew Tate would approve. The jacket is the only thing keeping him from flying away in a gust of wind. He's got to be careful. He's got to keep his arms to his sides because if he lifts his arms up, he's so skinny that a gust of wind might catch the jacket and like blow him away in the wind like a leaf. Sad story about this song. So basically that like violin hook there. Da, 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 da. That's a sample of an orchestral cover of a Rolling Stones song, and they did not clear the sample. So they got sued by the Rolling Stones. Oh, they got the rights to the sample, but they used a second too long or something. Okay, that's whatever. Somehow or another, they didn't properly clear the sample. So they ended up having to pay the Rolling Stones all the royalties for this song, apparently. Update here. He was finally awarded full royalties like three months ago. Okay. Well, there we go. I did not know that. They recently admitted the Stones, they didn't handle this properly. Well, either way, it sucks that this was like their one big hit and uh, they had to pay all the money to the Rolling Stones. That absolutely sucks. 
absolutely sucks. I think it's a great song. But mostly just because he just showed absolutely no respect to that bitch trying to slow him down. He said, just get the fuck out of my way. I don't have time for this. I'm on my way to get a new leather jacket. He gives no fucks. Exactly. Also, I like how all the fashion in this is like come full circle and like this girl's outfit is very 1997 but you could buy this same outfit right now at forever 21 or whatever because the fashion has come full circle I, can change, I, can change, I, can change, I think it's a great song though to be fair though a big part of what made the song so good is that uh that violin sample that they used so i would say you know how much credit do we give them for that versus how much credit do we give the stones i don't know but i do think it's a good song i like it yeah he gave no fucks he ripped off the rolling stones and speared a karen and got huge shout out to the verve just living life on the edge Okay, speaking of more 90s babes, along with Lisa Loeb, we have Cannonball by the Breeders. Big song of 1994, featuring the two twin sisters, Kim and Kelly Deal, I think. This is very 90s, incredibly 90s. This song is as 90s as it gets. That bass line, iconic. And uh, again, I will say every single alternative guy in the 90s had a crush on the Deal sisters. If they tell you otherwise, they're lying. Even if you didn't like this song, you liked Kim and Kelly Deal. If you said otherwise, you're absolutely lying. And I think this is a good song. I miss these like uh, breathy ethereal girl vocals in the 90s uh the 90s alternative rock it's so alternative i love this part shout out to the drummer with his two-piece set yeah shouting into the megaphone vocals that was very 90s it was indeed i would say if you wanted to find one song that like really was the essence of the the word alternative this might be one of them you know it's like this or like loser by beck when it comes to alternative it does not get any more alternative than the breeders that kind of music makes me think of these kind of striped shirts which everybody including me wore in the 90s i think this is a really good song i like it yeah, Billy Corgan shirts, yes. I think this is a really good song. I like it. I think it holds up. Perhaps, maybe these are like rose-colored glasses that I'm seeing this through. Maybe it's because of my teenage crush on Kim and Kelly deal. I don't know. But I think the song is really good. I think it holds up. Next up, we have... Hey, 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 hey. Who remembers this one? What's Up by Four Non Blondes. Ooh, it's a good point. This may be some of the first Yarling. That's true. Because this is from like 94, I think. So only a little bit after Pearl Jam. Before Creed. Some very strong Yarling. Still. Any 90s revivalists looking for some fashion, some fit inspiration, you need to look no further than this video. Like every frame of this is like the ultimate 90s mood board. We've got the leather top hat with the goggles. We've got dreads. I don't know what you would call that shirt, but a lot of these like funky, the funky jewelry, the bright red lipstick with the nose ring, and then the socks, red stripey socks with the combat boots. Man, I'm feeling triggered by the nostalgia. That's true. If we wanted to play 90s fit grunge bingo, we would fill every square on the bingo card just with this video. I realized quickly when I knew realized I quick. that the world into a crisis. Times <laughs> when I'm finding <laughs> Here's a square on your 90s alternative bingo card is like a fish I shot in the forest. Like, you know, Beastie Boys, So What You Want has this. I'm pretty sure the video for Loser by Beck has this. You got to have the fish I shot in the forest. I, I Not a tied boot in sight. No way. We didn't have time to tie our boots in the 90s. We were too busy being alternative. Kind of takes a long time to get to the chorus.
I fucking hated this song in the 90s. I hated it with like every ounce of my being at the time. I will say now, I'm not sure that I would say it's great, but she is a great singer. I will say that. She's a very good vocalist. Why does she look like Boy George? You would have to ask her. It was the 90s. We all looked like Boy George in the 90s. That's what we did. He had to look like Boy George. Shout out to Linda Perry. Not one, but two different sets of top hats with goggles in the same video. Only Rob Zombie has an equal amount of dedication to top hats and goggles. You know what we need for this? Two sets of top hats with goggles. This is what we get. Slow clap. Another fun fact about this is, aside from being just like the Bible of uh, 90s alternative style, is Linda Perry, who is the singer of Four Non Blondes, went on to be a very successful and very good songwriter. She wrote a bunch of stuff for Pink. She wrote Beautiful by uh, Christina Aguilera. She did What Are You Waiting For for Gwen Stefani. She also did some stuff for like Adele. Um, she's a super successful like very, very, very well-known, very respected songwriter and a super talented. Seems like a cool person too. Anyhow, last one we have for this segment is uh, Unbelievable by EMF. And by the way, to this day, you can tell, look at how I'm dressed right now and you will be able to see that to this day, I think this is from 91, to this day, I aspire to look like the guys in EMF. This is all I have ever wanted is to look like these guys. You will see. I saw this band in like 1991, 92. I was like 13. I loved it. This chorus is so good. And look at these fits. Oh my God. To this day, all I want to do is look as cool as this guy. Top tier roller rink music. It is roller rink music. The chorus is so good. This guitar hook. So catchy. You may not like it, but this is what peak male performance looks like, friends. Look at this. Look at these fits. His like baggy denim jorts like pulled up to his nipples with his hat at a jaunty angle. The guy's got his uh, headless bass and the guy on the keyboards just rocking out in his salmon vision streetwear shirt. Legends. Aerodynamically designed to steal your girl. It's true. If you muted this and told people it was turnstile, they'd believe you. It's true. If you just put like holiday or something behind this, be like, man, this new turnstile video is fire. Yeah, they were the 90s hype beasts. It's true. I hear this played in grocery stores now. That's what's sad. That's how you know you're old. When the music that was cool when you were in like seventh grade gets played at the grocery store, that's how you know you're officially old. I was so jealous of this guy's look right here. I had this same shirt. I insisted on getting this shirt when I was in eighth grade because the guy at EMF had it. You can see to this day, I still want to dress like these guys. You're so unbelievable. Oh, tell me again that I'm unbelievable. Say it again. I just want to be unbelievable. Oh, look at this guy's moves. Look at that. Just jamming on those keys. Not a care in the world. All I ever wanted to do is to be these guys. Sadly, those days are behind me. I'm old. My life is half over. The specter of death inches closer day by day. I will never be unbelievable. But does this song hold up? Hell yes, it does. They may have been a one-hit wonder, but damn it. They were a great one-hit wonder. And that does it for this installment of 90s one-hit wonders. As we uh, relive my youth and remind the world as well as myself that uh, I'm going to die soon. It's going to happen. I thought this was going to be fun, but now I'm just feeling the weight of my own mortality.